All right, I'm going to leave this on here, brother. Blue one on uh, the morning. Uh, okay. Everybody get your Bible turned to 1 Timothy chapter 1. The book of 1 Timothy chapter number 1. Everybody looking at it now. Look at your Bible. Where's that baby at? I've got a brand new baby here this morning. Go back there. Are you back there, Ashley? <laughs> oh, okay. Hold it up there to that window. Where, where's it at? Is it in here? Oh, it's in here. She's back over the other one. Stand up over there, brother. Show that brand new and first time she's been to church today. Give her a big hand. Woo! Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, you know, when you're raising them kids, uh, you're going to turn around one of these days and they're taller than you are. You better enjoy them while you can. First Timothy chapter 1. All right. Now, everybody, let's give me attention this morning. The book of 1 Timothy was the Apostle Paul writing 65 A.D. That would put this about 30 years, close to 30 years, after the Lord Jesus went back to heaven and ascended. The book of 1 Timothy has six chapters, 113 verses, 2,244 words. Paul was Timothy's spiritual daddy. He called him my son. So he was evidently one of his converts from one of his, his meetings that he had. Uh, the two books of 1 Timothy, 1 and 2 Timothy, turned their spiritual guns on people that mess with what they call the faith. There's only one real faith. And people who depart from the faith, 1 Timothy 4, 1. People who deny the faith, 1 Timothy 5, 8. People who cast off the faith, 1 Timothy 5, 12. People who are seduced from the faith, 1 Timothy 6.10. People who err from the faith, 1 Timothy 6.21. People who overthrow the faith, 2 Timothy 2.18. And people who are reprobate concerning the faith. And that's in 2 Timothy 2.8. Now I'm going to read the first part of chapter, the part of this first chapter here. And I want to show you something. I know you, I, I guarantee you probably you've never heard a sermon on this subject. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 3, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, look at it, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies forever, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now look at it. Now the end of a commandment, is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which, that good straight way, some have swerved, have turned aside into vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law. Look at this verse, y'all. Neither understanding what they say nor whereof they affirm. You know what that means? He said these people have absolutely no idea in the world what they're talking about. Just yakking. Now, I will now give you the title of this sermon. The title of this sermon, never been done before. I got a little help here. To, this is the title of the sermon today. Here's my title of this sermon. And we're going to do 10 more minutes of this. Nine more minutes. Matter of fact, I'm just going to do this till almost 12 o'clock and we'll dismiss. You just watch the news. The time. They're saying, how will the Democrats handle this situation? Here's where the God hears that. I love to do that. Frankie had this thing running around the house with that day, and I got, grabbed it and I go throw it in a trash can. And I started studying this. He had this thing running. I said, Frankie, will you put that thing up? You know, and I'm patient. Now look, that the title of the sermon is Vain Jangling. That's what it says. Look it up. That it said, verse 6: some having swerved have turned aside under what you just heard. The definition of vain jangling. 
Vein jangling is a ringing, metallic, bell, discord, racket out of ten. Out of ten. I'll give you now another example of vein jangling. That don't take long to get on your nerves, does it? We, all, we got a piano in the house. Every kid that ever comes over does that on the piano. All right. Let's talk about this for a few minutes this morning. Bible said some have swerved. You ever been going down the road? You know, when you drive the highway out there, you, there's lines you're supposed to stay in. And you're staying straight. When you live the Christian life, when you're doing right, when you're serving God, when you're preaching, when you're singing, you're going down a, a road. We're supposed to go straight. And some of you, a lot of people, swerved. You ever been, you ever been riding with somebody and they swerve all over? I've been pulled over twice for driving drunk. And I ain't never been drunk. Uh, because I was reading a map or trying to figure out where I was at. I was in Florida one time. And, and you start swerving. And you swerve over here. Uh, I don't know who invented them little things on the side of the road, but I'm really glad they did. Where it's like, a blah, 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 and, and that'll help you get back on track, right? Well, that's what I'm sort of doing this morning. Uh, uh, I want to help you to get back on track. Uh, you, you get off track. You have an impure heart. You have a bad conscience. You have faith. You feign faith. And that results in vain jangling. Now, what vain jangling is this morning is just a nerve-wracking racket. Let me give you an illustration. Number one. Number one. Vain jangling detracts from the real truth. When people just yak, 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 yak all the time, it detracts from the real truth. There's so much babbling today, y'all. Yakety yak. <laughs> uh, no, no, you know, uh, I ain't never agreed with Mick Jagger on nothing. Uh, but I, I, I st when I studied, I thought about him. And I thought about, he said, uh, a man comes on the radio telling me more and more about some useless information supposed to buy my imagination. You know, he said, just yak, 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 yak. That's the only thing he ever said I agreed with. Uh, uh, but, but he was right. He, he was right. Just blab, 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 blab. Blab, blab. Here it is. Now, your man comes on the radio. Politician gives a speech. All right. We'll talk more about that. Have you got the point yet? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That is vain, vain, empty, jangling. Just a bunch of racket, brother. Just a bunch of mangled up mess. Confused and chaotic uh, is, is a huge understatement for the situation that our world is in today. Now, all the TV stations. Have you thought about all the TV stations that are just running through this room right now? Radio stations? Not counting the internet, uh, YouTube, uh, all the... the uh, uh, all the other stuff that people are, I mean, just on and on and on. Now, here's what happens. When, when, they, when they put the news on, they're, they're doing that, many of them, to influence you to agree with them. But the bottom line is money. The bottom line is money. You want money, so you, you give people, you keep people watching to get more viewers in order to make money. So you hear something like this. Our next guest will weigh in on what will Kamala do if she and when she is elected. And it shows the next guest there smiling. And you think, oh, I can't go in there now. i got to see what he says. What they did, they just baited you into sitting there through five more minutes of commercials and a bunch of other junk. And then when you come back, that next guest says the same thing them last 15 says. Right? And the next thing you know, you've watched the news for a whole hour and you ain't a bit smarter than you was when you first turned it on. Uh, the internet is the same way. Uh, it says nothing different from all the rest. Now, uh, straight ahead, so-and-so will weigh in on what did Putin really tell Donald Trump when they met. And I, our next guest will weigh in on that. Oh, i got to know that. I've got to know what he said. No, you don't got to know. Because if it had been something important, it would have been headlines. It wouldn't have been three-fourths into the show. So what it is, it's just yak, yak, yak. What was really found on Hunter Biden's laptop? What? What, what was really there, girl, I reckon? Uh, the core, the core of the earth is now spinning backwards. Ah, they know that. 
I don't believe that. That was the core there. It's spinning back. Uh, today, uh, the new discoveries have been made on the ancient pyramids and how they were really constructed. They're still doing that. Get you to buy a book. Get you to watch a video. Get, it's bait. It's bait. It's bait. Who will be the highest paid athletes after the Olympics have been over? Will the Orioles uh, really make it to the World Series? Uh, will Mike Tyson be allowed to box women? And yes, if, as long as he believes he is one for a while. Uh, uh, will the Pope will give advice? Will now come and give advice on how America should pay everybody's bills? And we should fit the bill for the whole world while well, he's the richest man in the world. And then you turn the commercials and it's just Ozempic. Ozempic. I don't even know what Ozempic is. But, um, and Pat Boone trying to save some vitamins and Joe Namath trying to get you to do a reverse mortgage and, and oh, poor old Joe, he's 100 years old and they're paying him to get you to refinance your house and really let them have your house and so your kids won't get it and you get to get your money for it. That's what that reverse mortgage is. And then you turn us up and what's up? Liberty, 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 liberty. And whatever, man. That's just blabble, 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 blabble. That's what that is. Stay far like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. State Farm, you know, like that, you know. Uh, that's right, brother. Uh, the, 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 these are real. I didn't make these up. These popped up on my phone. And I'm like you. I'm curious. And when they say pop up on my phone, I said, I want to see what that is. 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 And you're wasting your whole life about some useless information supposed to buy your imagination. Amen. That's vain jangling people. Some of you people sitting right here, if you'd spend much time in your Bible as you do reading junk that don't mean nothing, you'd be dangerous for God. That's right. That's right. Divers have found 3,000-year-old statue. Well, so what? You know, uh, you'll spend 15 minutes reading that article uh, in the lake, but it has fresh human foot. Uh, fingerprints on it. How could how could it, you figure out fresh human fingerprints on something at the bottom of the lake? I don't know. Well, that's what it said. The U.S. skateboarders uh, uh, now reveals the poor condition of his Olympic bronze medal. Guy ran a bronze medal for the Olympics, and he revealed the poor condition of that medal. That's an interesting story that we should all spend time on. Somebody shipwrecked in Texas in 1528, and it is an unlikely tale of survival, and has now become a legend. Wow. That's that's worth an hour, ain't it, of your time? Uh, some discover uh, the the, uh, the the mysteries of the Great Pyramids again. It detracts from the real truth. Evolution comes out. Said the world is now. Scientists say the world is for uh, the universe is fourteen billion years old. Keeps getting older and older and older older to, to make allowance for evolution. See, if you go back far enough, anything like will happen. That's what they're, they're thinking is. And, uh, and the earth is 4.3 billion. They know 4.3 billion. Mm -hmm. Sure you know that. They don't a bit more know that uh, than I know how many hairs is on. I do know how many hairs is on his head. Uh, uh, none. Uh, I, I, I know how many. Jeff's got 18 left. They don't a bit more know that than a man in the moon. I'm telling you people, that is vain, vain, vain jangling detracts from the real truth. A giant meteor hit the earth uh, millions of years ago and that's what happened to the dinosaurs. It killed all the dinosaurs. Knocked the earth off its own, whatever. In the ice age, when all the earth was covered that, that is not true. Uh, there was some ice, there was some glaciers, but the ice age is baloney. There's a flood uh, that messed this thing up. Amen? That's right, brother. I tell about how the Inca Indians had come and how Stonehenge was really collected. And, and uh, I, I might want to remind you at this point that you can read the whole Bible through in 70 hours. Seth, if you did that 30 minutes a day, 140 days, the whole Bible. Now, you don't have time, I understand. Okay? I want to say secondly this morning, vain jangling waste a lot of time and a lot of money. You can make some money while you're wasting your time with vain jangling. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and verse 15 and 16, redeem the time. That means make the best use of your time. I've tried to train myself because I'm getting on up in years uh, to realize how short life is. And I tell you what you better do. If you're young, like 30, 40, 50, 
If you're young, still young in heart, I'll tell you what you better learn how to do. You better learn how to leave off what really don't matter and major in stuff that really does matter and learn how to do at least two things at the same time. At least. I mean, why are you doing it? Like, like this little thing like if, if I'm supposed to call people, two or three people, I don't just, uh, when I have to go somewhere, I don't just sit there and talk, call them talk to them back. I say, I'll do that while I'm in my car. See, while I'm driving down the road, I call them and get come on. Yeah, fix your time. You know what the Bible says? Redeem the time. Figure out a way to make the best use of your time and don't stay on the blessed phone all day long. Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're losing your life. You're losing your life. Let me tell you something the Bible said in Matthew 12, 36. Does everybody listen? The Bible said in Matthew 12, 36 that men will give an account of every idle word that men speak. When you're just blabbing, uh, vain babbling. In 2 Timothy 2.16 the Bible talks about vain babbling. Just yak, 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 yak. Oh, did you see on there? It'll, it'll, something will pop up on your phone and it'll say she mocks God then this. You know, It makes you think God struck her dead. But she tripped and fell, you know, something like that. And you think, oh my goodness, did you see that video? Did you see that video where that man had a frog in his yard and he went out and he thought it was a baby dinosaur or a crocodile and, and the kid fell out and he tripped? It's so funny, you got to watch this. And, and I'm, not against, I'm not against looking at stuff, people, but uh, it, it, when, you, when you think about it, when you think about it, 90% of the stuff that we see and hear on the news is nothing more than designed to get money out of us or to just waste our whole day. Amen. New discoveries in Egypt. Uh, have scared scientists. This is a fact. I just I quoted this off, off an article. New discoveries in Egypt have scared scientists. Endless genealogies. Archaeologists, archaeologists are still digging to find out the true history of the Egyptians and civilization. People have finally uh, 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 got confused and about give up. Politicians have it just yak, 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 yak. Uh, vain jangling makes a lot of waste of a lot of time and a lot of money. You got it in churches. You got it in churches. Preachers going around preaching the resurrection is past already. You know what that means? They believe everything in the book of Revelation was fulfilled in Matthew, in Matthew at the, uh, what you call it, the uh, destruction of Jerusalem, 70 AD. And they put all those prophecies, I know people believe that, in the, in, in the past that's called praetorism. And praetorism is a hopeless doctrine that leaves us having no clue in the world what's going to happen. That's vain babbling. All prophecies have been fulfilled. You know, uh, there's vain babbling of preachers preaching about you got to go to church on Saturday or you're breaking God's law. Uh, they're called Seven Day Adventists. And they say you got to go to church on Saturday. Most of them have no idea in the world what they're talking about. They have no, they have no understanding of what they're even saying. They say you you have to get baptized to get saved. They say you can't be forgiven unless you, Catholic Church teaches, you can't really have your sins forgiven unless you partake in a mass blessed by a Catholic priest. You know what that is? Blah, 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 blah. That has absolutely no truth or foundation at all in what is true. They say, uh, 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 one guy said, uh, he quoted on and he said, uh, he's Calvinist and he said, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they might obtain the salvation. And, and they, they really think that, that, that Paul was saying, I got to do this so the elect can get saved. Listen, if that doctrine's right, the elect's going to get saved whether you endure anything or not, brother. It don't matter what you do or you don't do. If that, it, it's all just yak, 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 yak. And one preacher got up and he said, uh, brethren, except you repent in a measure and be converted as it were, you will, I regret to say, be damned to some extent. Here's that sermon. That's that preacher right there, brother. Uh, you know what the Bible? The other man said, you know what the Bible said that? A sounding brass and a tinkling sound. Have you ever heard somebody get up and try to give a testimony and it's just, oh, God. I know you have, right? If you've been around these little country churches in North Carolina, there's always some person who will stand up and they'll start. And... What it sounds like is you go in the kitchen in the middle of the night and open the cabinet and all the pots and pans fall out in the floor. That's what their testimony sounds like. It's a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. 
Just a racket. And everybody, even the little kids, saying, well, there's something that weird about that guy. Wasn't they, Brother Danny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're it. Yeah, they're it. That's true. That's true. Vain jangling wastes a lot of time and a lot of money. Now, let me give you a verse of scripture here. The Bible said in Acts 17 and verse 21 that the Athenians, listen to me, listen to me. He said, spent their time in nothing else. That's all they did. Except to hear or tell some new thing. That's all these people did. Anybody who sits around all day and all they think about is, I heard this and I heard that and I'm going to tell this and I'm going to tell it. You know what you need? A job. That'd help you a lot right there. Say amen right there, brother. If you ain't got a job, get you a job. If you're able to work, get to work, brother. Amen. That'd help you a lot. But the Bible said these people, I guess, I guess they had plenty of money and didn't have to work. And they spent their time in nothing else but to hear or tell some new thing. Did you hear what she said? They said, they said, she said, they said, oh! No, I, I, you, I promise you won't tell nobody. I promise I won't. I promise I won't. And then uh, that's, that's the word there to um, Sister Suspicion. Well, Sister Suspicion gets on her phone and calls up Sister Exaggerator. She said, now, I'm not, I don't mean to be talking about nobody, but I'm telling you, some people are saying that blah, 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 blah. I don't want to name no names. He's got a black truck. Just, just hush. <laughs> you ever talk to people like that? They'll spend their time in nothing. Nothing. Sit around all day. Listen, it's half the day on the phone. You can ask my wife, buddy. I ain't spend no half day on no phone. Son, I can counsel you in, in 30 seconds. Tell you what to do with any problem you got in the world. That's right. And I know sometimes you got to be nice to people and all that. But I, I can give you the answer to all you. Jesus answered your problems. He is. He is. I don't care. Well, I know that's oversimplifying it, and you'd like for me to comfort you for an hour, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to tell you what the answer to your problem is. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. You get it right with Him, it'll work out somehow or another. You got marriage problems, both of you. Get your heart right with God. It can work out. You got a problem at work? Get it right with the Lord. You got a problem in your own heart? Get it right with the Lord. That's the answer to all of our problems this morning. You don't have to read a book that thick to find out and get right with God. Ain't nothing wrong with reading a book, people. But listen, get it right with Are you doing what God said? If you're doing what God said, okay. Don't worry. Oh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Who? Here's an article at Walmart on front of a magazine. Who really was Adam and Eve? Oh, they found out. I believed all my life Adam and Eve was there. They found And you buy that magazine and read that. Well, we don't need you to tell us who Adam and Eve is. <laughs> We know who Adam and Eve was. Amen. <laughs> who re- who was, was Jesus a real person? That'll happen at Christmas. So I come, was Jesus a real person? Just to take up your time. I'm telling you, I once was young, now I'm old. You better listen to me. It goes by mighty fast. And the older you get, the faster it goes. And you'll spend half your life listening to a bunch of junk that ain't going to profit you one way or another and one day give an account of every idle word that you speak to the Lord. Amen. Oh, you can't call him Jesus. Don't call him Jesus. It's got to be Yeshua. It's got to be Yeshua. And Yahweh, well, I'll tell you something. Let me tell you something, people. Y'all that watch me that believe that. The greatest book ever put on planet earth calls him Jesus. So I guess it's alright for me to call him Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus. And you say, well that's English. Yes, it sure is. And the greatest book that's ever been on planet earth is in English. There's been more people saved, more converts won, more revivals started by the teaching and preaching of the King James Bible than there's ever other manuscript in the history of the world. Say amen right there. His name Jesus, babe. Amen. Well, well, there's a deliverance ministry. Have you heard about this deliverance ministry? And everybody's got a demon. Everybody's got a demon. I mean, if you woke up feeling bad, it's a demon. Uh, if you woke up with a headache, it's a demon. Uh, one lady said, oh, she said, the devil's trying to tell me my back's hurting. No, he ain't. That ain't the devil telling you that. Your, your back really is hurting. <laughs> the devil ain't telling you that. It is hurting. You, got to, you quit lying, the Lord might heal you. Just say, my back's killing me, Lord, help me. Tell, be honest about it. Everybody got a demon. I don't know if there is enough demons for everybody in the world to have four or five. There's eight billion people. 
45 billion demons? I don't think so. Now, there's probably millions of them, and it's, uh, it's been estimated. I don't know that. Endless genealogy. The resurrection is packed. The, you know, a perfect example of what I'm preaching about this morning is the view. Perfect example. Let's turn it on. What you got today? Whoopee. Here's what your ears hear. I don't think Donald Trump has a, 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 a you know, or I believe Kamala, or I think Joe Biden. Here's what the Lord hears. You just wasted two hours of your life right there. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm getting old. One day you'll wish you had them days back. One day you'll look back. Listen, I study preachers. I've studied preachers for a long time. And I've learned a lot by listening to older preachers. And every old preacher that I know of, if they ask him, if you had it to do over, what would you do? He said, I'd pray more and I'd travel and talk and study less. Nothing wrong with traveling, preaching, all that. But every one of them said, if I had it to do over... I'd spend more time with just me and God in my prayer closet because that's where you get the most accomplished for God. Every lasting thing on planet Earth. You know, we just come back from camp a few weeks ago. Mira fired up. Everybody was. Took three weeks of summer to knock some of them out. Uh, but you know, everybody's all fired up and crying, giving testimonies and everything. You know what? You know where that comes from? That don't come from entertainment. That don't come from talent. That comes from somebody prayed to fire down on them kids. Spend your time praying. Everybody knows who the gossipers are. So that's who they call when they got a prayer request. Brethren, it's sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Thirdly, and I'm done, vain jangling, according to 2 Timothy 2, or t- uh, 2, 16, 17, shun profane and vain babblings, which will increase unto more ungodliness. What's that? It said, if we can just keep people yakking about nothing, and blab, 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 blab about stuff that don't even matter. Sometimes people call me and I know good and well the devil put it in their heart to call me because I think I'm, I'm trying to do something for the Lord here and they're coming just, and they, the devil just puts it in their heart to call you Henry. So when that happens to you, you say, uh, well look, I'm real busy right now and, and I'll be praying for you and you know, not like that. Don't let, don't let, don't let somebody just fill your mind Put up a no dumping sign right here. You got them big earrings. Uh, uh, put up on it and say, hey, no dumping allowed here. I'm busy. I got something to do. I'm busy for God. Amen. Uh, that's right, brother. Uh, you know, people say, people say, oh, I went to college now and I studied religion. I had a religion class and they taught us that the Red Sea really wasn't that deep. It was the Reed Sea. And it wasn't but that deep. And Moses and the children of Israel crossed it. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Somebody done jangle in your ear, buddy. How'd Pharaoh and his whole army drown in that deep water? Amen, Amen Brother Danny. Uh, listen, people, uh, don't do it. It's vain jang- It will increase in the more ungodliness. That's right. That's right. Uh, somebody said there couldn't be a God. This is what scientists believe. There couldn't be a God. Because if there was one, he, he'd fix this mess. See, that's just going to college and listening to a bunch of jangling. There is a God, and he's going to fix it. Don't get in such a hurry. Just take it easy, brother. He's going to fix it one day. You just better make sure on your own right side when he does. Well, they found out now that the eye of a needle was a gate over in Jerusalem and the camel had to get on, whatever, whatever. Just yak, 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 yak. You say, hey, you know what? Wasn't that preacher? Because Jesus said with man it's impossible. But with God all things are impossible. There wasn't no gate in Jerusalem. There might be one, but that ain't what he's talking about. Well, do you know, Brother Danny, that they have found out now uh, that uh, that everybody, may, you know, has to make up their own mind. And, and one guy, one guy I played basketball with, he told me, he said, I said, how's everything going? He said, man, you pray for my daughter. He said, I raised her in church her whole life. Good church in Marion. He said, I raised her in church her whole life. And he said, I took her to church. He said, uh, she's taught right her whole life. He said, she went to college. And the first time she come home, three months from college, she said, you want to go to church? She said, Dad, I've I, I sort of been waiting to tell you. Uh, I don't believe like that no more. He said, well, how do you believe? 
And she said, well, science has proved that this, the Bible can't be true. And all that. you know what that girl heard? She heard a bunch of junk like this right here. She heard a bunch of, somebody done filled her head full of junk, brother. And the Bible said it will increase on the more ungodliness. So the more yakety yak there is on the internet, on, on YouTube, on ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox, all the news channels, the more they yak about nothing makes people more wicked. Because, let me tell you why. Because if there are no absolutes, and there's no such thing as absolute right and absolute wrong, then everybody just makes up their own mind what they believe is right and wrong. Just like in Judges, where every man did that which is right in his own eyes. And that's the point where we are today. Everybody makes their own rules. If you feel like it's wrong, it's wrong. If you don't, it's not. There are no moral guideposts uh, which we judge right and wrong. Then everybody makes up their own mind. I want to tell you this morning, it will increase because of science falsely so called. That's what the Bible said, the Bible said in Colossians 2.8 listen to me all kids, the Bible said in Colossians 2.8, beware of philosophy beware of philosophy, watch out for philosophy what's that, higher learning, knowledge wanting to know about this, what got Eve in trouble, the devil said you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, you need your good education Eve, man that really helped her out didn't it, Lord no brother you don't have, listen, there's nothing wrong with science, there's nothing wrong with philosophy but it's got to be right or it'll pollute your mind and make you a worse sinner than you already are beware of opposition to science falsely so called, you know why college kids live like a bunch of animals because they've been taught their whole life they are one. That's right. That's right. The Bible is right on creation. The Bible is right on the Ten Commandments. The Bible is right. God did make the world and put everything on it in six days and nights. God did create this world. God did make it like it is. God did uh, inspire Moses and give him the Ten Commandments. God did set aside Israel like he did no other nation that's ever been on planet Earth. Anti-Semitism is wrong. I have to tell a politician that it is wrong to hate somebody just because they're Jewish or black or white or Hispanic or anything else. All of that's wrong. Just a bunch of people running their mouth trying to make money off suckers that don't know the truth. Amen. The Bible's got the truth on morals. The Bible's got the truth on same-sex marriage. The Bible's got the truth on adultery. The Bible's got the truth on, uh, on drugs and alcohol and immorality and living in sin and lying and cheating and stealing. It's a moral guidepost to keep us straight in line. We won't swerve off and hit the ditch. I'll say this when I'm through. You know, you say, all right, Brother Danny, you got me. I've been wasting two or three hours a day just on junk that down. you hear the same thing over and over. You know how much you know how much news I've watched this week? Total maybe maybe fifteen minutes. And I guarantee you I know all the bad stuff and big stuff's going on. Because they just say it over and over and over and over. Now, if something terrible happens, I'll turn it on and check it out. Something brand new. But if, if something terrible ain't happened, they just repeat the same thing. So here's my advice to you. Three things and we'll go. Number one, strictly limit your time and exposure to the secular mainstream media and just randomly scrolling to strictly limit your time. I just gave you some very good advice. Limit your time. I'm not saying it's all wrong. It's all right to keep up what's going on. We're not supposed to be ignorant. But I'm telling you, you can you, you do a lot better. Here's what the Bible says. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes thee to go, go astray or go air. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. Two-thirds of your news watching time could be dropped and you'd be just as smart as you are right now. It would, it, you would be a bit dumber than you are already. Number two, saturate and cleanse your mind and heart with the unadulterated living Word of God. 
Bible said, give thyself to wholesome words. Meditate day and night on the Scripture. I've just been reading Psalms again. And I'm a little behind in the Old Testament, so I've been reading Psalms. And those Psalms have jumped out and helped me. And I read them and think about what I'm reading. And it just like just reaffirms everything I know that's right. And just helps me and cleanses me. Man shall not live by YouTube alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. Ladies and gentlemen, saturate your mind with the Word of God. Meditate day and night in the Scripture. And number three, you worship God every day of your life and witness. Worship God every day of your life. You want some good positive preaching? This is a positive message, buddy. I'm glad that we can worship God every single day. I do. I try to. I think, man, I don't want to go one day without worshiping God. You say, well, Brother Danny, we come to church on Sunday. You, you can go to church every Sunday and not worship. Uh, you can go, a lot of people go to church every Sunday and not worship. Worship is an intense love and admiration for them. You know what I do when I get through praying in the morning? Nobody's in the closet but me. I throw up my hands like that and say, I love you, Lord. Lord, let me do right today. I do that every day. Not a ritual. Not to be seen. Ain't nobody in there but me and the Lord, the devil. And I'm telling you, brother, I, I get a blessing. I thank God I've got another day. I thought it this morning. I sent my girls a text. I said, we got another change. We got another change. This gift that God's give us a day to live for Him. We'll never have this day again. You can't go back once it's passed. Don't waste your time with vain jangling. Get something done for God, people. Find somebody to help them. Find somebody to help them. Help a homeless person. We got people here this morning need help. I'm not, this morning, here, today. We got kids in office mess. Unbelievable. You, we, had them, we had them animals here the other night at Bible school. They went crazy over them. A lot of time we forget how, how these kids are. Shh, they don't get to see a lot. Do a lot. Right, listen, put your, put your time and effort into something profitable. You'll be on antidepressants like everybody else if all you do is watch the news. You want something positive? Get in the book. Grab your handful of tracks. Go tell your neighbor to come to church tonight. That's the answer. This. I'd go crazy if I had to listen to that all day long. I got a, what am I? I had a Sam's Cola hooked on here somewhere. There it is. It got out of... Take that to college your first day and hold it up on his heart. No, 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 don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. If it's evolution class, you could. Teacher, may I ask a question? Thank you for that lecture. The Bible said some swerved under vain jangling. I'm going to tell you, I'm done. Y'all girls come get a song. I have no idea what you can sing with that. Picturing Jesus. Have a nice day. Tom the toad, don't matter. Nobody gonna come to all or no way. I wouldn't advise you. But I just want us to have a good time this morning to think about this thought. Think of the time we waste. Think of the time we waste, y'all. Oh my goodness. Y'all something about wasting time? Got some useless information. Supposed to buy my imagination. You don't know. You better not know that. <laughs> Poor old Mick. He's still hanging on. We ought to pray for him. But listen, y'all. About, about time we start saying, you know what? How could I best use my time today? I'm getting older and I'm, I'm starting to notice it more and more and more. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there real quick. Whatever you're doing for God, if you work, if you're in sports or you're in, in school, Give it your best shot. Do your best. Don't don't waste your life. Waste don't waste your life. If you work, do the work hard as you can. Make money, provide for your family. Do all that stuff. It's good. The thing about it is, you'll waste half your life if you ain't real careful. And then you look back one day. That's what midlife crisis is. When you get about forty and you look back and say, "Good night, I ain't done nothing." And then it hits you all of a sudden. <laughs> we all go through that. We all do. A truth. It'll mess you up. Uh, oh, we're getting the real singers up here now. Amen. All right. Go ahead. Let's stand this morning. Let's stand.
Amen. 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 You want to come pray for your neighbor or something? Come on. See how good that sounds? That's what you feed your mind on. Hold some words. Hold some words. Even though I failed him many times. See, I know that sound better. Whatever. Whatever. I have Praise given him a million Amen. different reasons to walk away. All right. But Amen. not a single one has ever changed his mind. Yeah. I yeah. never made All right, we're going to be friendly now. Jesus. Everybody just turn around See you tonight at 6 o'clock. Y'all just keep playing. God bless you. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. We're about to change. Closest, dearest.